Right, today I want to talk about the reflect object. Now, this is more of an intermediate topic than a beginner topic. It's not something you're going to do in your first few months writing JavaScript, but it allows us to create code that's a little bit more dynamic. The reflect object allows us to target some object and determine whether or not it's got a property or a function and then call it, and it gives us an opportunity to intercept the interaction with that object and its properties so that we can modify or change things slightly or we can write code that dynamically can deal with multiple objects and then call these functions or work with these properties in separate ways. Typically the reflect object is used in conjunction with the proxy object and I'm going to be talking about proxies in a future video probably later this week but in the near future anyway I'm going to be doing a video on proxies. So, how does Reflect work and what does it do for us? Well, a um, couple notes up here, just things to take note of. All methods in the Reflect object are static, so it's not like you create an instance of a Reflect object and then the properties exist on that instance. They exist on the Reflect object itself. And you can't use new, it's not, um, you can't use a construct, it has no constructor, so you can't use it with the keyword new. So. I've got an object here, I've got a few properties inside of it, a string, a number, and a function. The function's got a couple of properties, and all it does is write out this simple message. So how would I use reflect to work with this object? Well, I've got a list here, I'm going to keep this in the file at the bottom. These are the most common methods that you get on the reflect object. Now there are a few others, but this is the most common list. I'm going to do uh, one more that's not on this list, I'll, I'll add it in there when I post it in the code gist. If you look in the description, you'll find a finished copy of this file. Um, I'm going to add the define property method in there as well. Okay, so working with this. If I wanted to know some object, all the properties that exist inside of there, we can use reflect own keys. Now, this takes one argument the object. So the object is Alex, this variable right here. So we're passing in the object and this is going to give us back all of the properties that are owned by this. Not things that are in the prototype chain but just owned by this object itself, owned by the Alex object. So if I run that, there we go. We get an array that has all those properties. Okay, so you're thinking, well I can do that already with an object. True, you can. Um, the object itself is going to have those methods that we can find out all of its keys or all the keys in the prototype chain and, and so on. Um, this allows us to dynamically pass in an object. That's sort of the key here is we're reflecting back on the object that's passed in and running these operations on that object. So if I wanted to get the value of some property inside of some object that I'm passing into my function, we can use reflect get. And then again, here's a variable holding that object that I want to interact with. And then you can see here string, number, or symbol. That's what I'm passing in. So what is the name of the property that we're getting? Well, I want to get the, the ID property, we'll say. So I'll save that and we'll run it again. There we go, 93. That is the value of the ID property inside of here. So again, we're dynamically determining this. If I want to change the value of that, there we go, we're just changing the value of the ID property inside this object. So I'll clear that out, run it again. And we've now changed it, this method if it worked, returns true. So, okay, assuming this thing worked, it's true. Now I want to get the value of that property again. There we go. Now you can see that it was 93, we changed it, now it's 94. All right, that's get and set. So that's these methods right here, the get and set. We've looked at the own keys. There is a has that allows you to check and see if it has one specific property. Um, pretty simple one. Yes, true, it does have that property with that name. 
right up here, yes, there is a property with that name inside this object. Simple check. Um, if I want to get rid of a property, we'd have to uh, do something similar to this. Call in target and key. It's just like the delete operator when you're deleting a property inside of an object. Now apply, so get and set, and has, these have to do with uh, properties with values, like this. So name and ID, get and set would work with that. If you've got a method inside of your object, so it's a function, then you want to use apply. So reflect apply, just like that. What we're going to do is we're passing in the object, right here, or sorry, not the object itself, but what is the method that we're targeting? And then this is the context, so that's the object here. So instead of just passing in Alex as the first one, we're passing in Alex as the this argument, the target is the function that we're dealing with, and then argument list, okay, this thing is expecting parameters. So you can put any, you can put an array hard-coded in there, you can pass a variable with an array. I could even call the reflect own keys method and get all the keys inside of there. And the first two, you can see, are going to be passed and written out here when this runs. There we go. There's the result. And name and ID, those were the arguments that got passed in here. They were the two first two values in this array, name, ID, and hello. And just as I mentioned earlier, that one other method that's going to be in here is the reflect define property. So it's, it's like the define property method that you have on every object. It's just letting us dynamically choose the object. And what's the name of the property? Let's do this. We'll say age is the name of the property. The value of the property is going to be part of the object that we pass in. So you can see it's a property descriptor object that we're passing in. Now I want to set the value as, we'll say 30, we can say enumerable, false, and all the other property descriptors are available to us. Once we've done that, now, let's see if I copy this, bring it down here, we'll check on this new property age. And there we are, 30 which was the value that we set when we created this age property. Okay, so that's it. That's what the reflect object does, is it dynamically lets us carry out operations on these objects. And if we put the, the reflect object and its methods inside of a function, we could dynamically be working with the objects, intercepting what somebody would normally do. Generally used in conjunction with proxies, and I'm going to do another video on that. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.